token suck. All right, perhaps suck is a little bit of a strong word, but one does not care too much for this particular musical ensemble. And here's why. But firstly, in case you're a sensible individual who does not frequent the internet too much or does not keep up to date with the musical world, let me give you a little introduction to the band right now. Oh, and I think it's only fitting today that we go incognito. Formed in 2016, Sleep Token are an English alternative metal band from London who fuse together elements of gent, metalcore, indie, R&B and all sorts to create what I can only describe as the final boss of drab, overly serious, self-important sad boy music. The band are so embarrassed by their own compositions that they choose to go as far as remaining anonymous and role-playing as a mushroom head tribute band fronted by the enigmatic Keith Vessels. Sleep Token had a pretty modern at cult following for a number of years, but it wasn't until 2023's run-up to their third full-length album, Take Me Back to Eden, that the band really exploded in popularity, gaining an unwaveringly loyal following of vapid TikTok baddies and soy-suckling gent enthusiasts. And if that wasn't enough, Sleep Token ended the year by selling out a headline show at the legendary Wembley Arena, proving that they really may just be the next big thing in metal. Anyway, so I know I'm not exactly this band's target audience, but it's important for me to try and keep up to date with, you know, current music and what's going on. So I did a little bit of a sleep token deep dive in hopes of understanding what all the fuss is about. So first off, it's not all negative. I do actually enjoy quite a few things about this band, believe it or not. Aesthetically, I think the band have totally fucking nailed it. From the imagery to the, uh, you know, the costumes and the masks, the stage show, all of the crazy lore that they've created around the band. I really wish more artists these days would put as much effort into their image as Sleep Token have, because it really goes a long, long way to make a band way more memorable. In addition, it goes without saying that the band are obviously very, very good musicians, especially the drummer, which I know people have a lot of praise for. Though I did watch his recent video with Dromeo and it was kind of like, unintentionally funny because of like the voice scrambler thing he was using. <laughs> taken a lot of inspiration from the UK dance music scene. I know these guys are very serious about remaining anonymous, but like this whole voice scrambler thing was like, <laughs> it was a bit much. No, there's a link down below, drumyou.com forward slash. I also find their onstage shenanigans kind of funny, like their penchant for making out with each other and stuff. I don't really understand if that's meant to be serious or a joke, but either way, it like rubs serious metal heads up the wrong way, which is always a good thing. Wish I could say the same about the music though. There's just so fucking much that annoys me about this band's music that I, I, I don't even know where to start. But I think the number one thing that seriously irks me about Sleep Token is their complete inability to pace songs properly. Like so many of their songs are built around these fucking dreary, extended, clean ambient sections that just like build and build and build and build for like minutes on end. And then finally you have like a big payoff, but it only lasts like 10 seconds and then BAM! you're back to like five more minutes of dirge. So their songs are like 90% cock tease and 10% payoff before they blow their load early. <laughs> The title track of their latest album, Take Me Back to Eden, is a perfect example of this. Right, so the song starts with some nice ambience for a while, really sets the scene, very pleasant. And after about 40 seconds or so, we get some uh, vocals over the top of it. Very nice performance, I dig it, great. Get a bit more tension, adding some layers. Then finally, about one minute 40 in, we get something that resembles a chorus, I think. Add some more drama. Sounds like it's leading to something, finally. There we go, there's the payoff. So far, I've got to say, this is a really fantastic song. The pacing, the riffs, the vocal performer. Oh wait, never mind, it's already over. So the song just suddenly decides to stop dead in its tracks for no reason, kill all the energy and the momentum it's already built up. And we just get like 30 seconds of like ambient nothing. Great. So now we get like a R&B verse, I guess, which could have been pretty cool if it came at a point in the song that wasn't so like jarring and disruptive. All right, and now we return to the chorus we had earlier. Like finally, a repeating section. Okay, things might be picking up again. All right, sounds like we're really building up to something big now. Let's go. Oh, never mind, false alarm. So now there's like another minute plus of ambient melodrama for no reason. And it's by this point in the song, I've just like given up with it. I'm just like not invested in it at all anymore. 
Now we have a new vocal section that has literally nothing to do with the rest of the song that came before it. All right, now we finally get a big version of the chorus that should have come like three minutes earlier. And then we're just slapping on some stock gent riffing to the end of it, I suppose, because why not? So some people will argue that this type of approach is prog or experimental. Um, well, I'm not really sure what to say to that, except, um, no. A lot of music fans have this idea in their head that prog music is just all about shoving as many different random ideas together as possible into a single song. But that could not be further from the truth. When you listen to a lot of the best prog and experimental albums throughout history, you'll hear that a hell of a lot of time has been spent on making sure that all of these different sections and stuff like flow seamlessly together and then it doesn't just sound like some fucking hodgepodge of like random shit stitched together but i think when people are talking about how experimental sleep token are they're probably referring to like the way they mash up different genres right and while they do indeed traverse multiple genres throughout their ditties and they for sure have crafted themselves a very very unique sound but they do so in like the most banal surface level way you could possibly do it like no matter what genre they're referencing in a song be it uh, metalcore or r&b or indie like whatever it just sounds like the most ai generated basic bitch example like if you want an example of a modern artist who actually does this sort of stuff really well then take someone like, I don't know, Poppy, for example, whose songs are really, really experimental and genre bending, but they never lose any of that like conciseness or like energy or excitement. The way she executes this stuff is just miles better than how Sleep Token do it. But honestly, that's not even my biggest issue with Sleep Token. At the end of the day, guys, all of this stuff that I've mentioned previously like, would be fine and excusable if it wasn't for the fact that their music is just really, really boring. <laughs> Besides a few really standout moments interspersed throughout this album, honestly, this thing is a, oh, it was a, it was a chore to sit through. Kind of reminds me of that feeling of when you were a kid around your grandparents' house on a rainy, depressing Sunday afternoon, and you've got the impending doom of school on the morrow, and they're making you watch some horrifically dull 1950s film on TV, you know? And trust me, this latest album is like head and shoulders above anything they've put out previously. Like, for example, one of the fan favorite songs called Alkaline, which has one of the dumbest, well, kind of funniest choruses in living memory, where Keith Bessels just repeats the same monotonous, annoying two-note melody throughout the whole thing. <laughs> And like ending every line in a rhyme or half rhyme. How about I just go eat some hay? I can make things out of clay and lay by the bay. I just may. What do you say? Another problem is that all of the different styles that they mash together are like very, very much of the current year. Like they're very 2020s. And history has told us that when you incorporate fad genres, uh, they don't tend to age too well. Like back in the 2000s, where for a while uh, bands were obsessed with mixing dubstep into their music. So as for their image, I know this is like a, a big gripe that a lot of people have with the bands and they sort of like compare them to, I don't know, like Ghost or something, wherein they look like they should be playing more evil music than what they actually sound like. I don't really vibe with that take personally because I actually think it's kind of cool that they've made this sort of disconnect between their image and their music. I, I like that, I really do. However, that being said, in my opinion, the image is way, way stronger than the music itself. Uh, so it just creates like a, you know, a textbook case of style over substance, unfortunately. But thankfully for the band, the image and the overall package is so strong that I guess it's enough to carry the, you know, their painfully mediocre music. Because I 100% guarantee that without all of the aesthetic shenanigans, that they would not be anywhere near as successful as they have become. I'm sorry! It's really frustrating though, because a lot of these songs have the potential to be absolutely fantastic. There are some absolute bangers contained within these overblown, bloated slog fests. Like, with some guidance from someone who actually knew what they were doing and would reel the band in and tell them no, songs like The Summoning could have easily become like one of the best alternative tunes in, in a long time. But no, they wasted what is probably the best hook they've ever written and just shoved it in a song that has like a 
minute and a half ambient interlude and a laughably awkward funk outro. Yeah, I don't know what the work was about. I really hope that in the future they can work with like a world class producer who can really help refine their sound and lose all of the unnecessary bullshit. As I do think that one day they have the potential to write some really fucking good music. Well, um, I do believe that covers everything. I am most definitely looking forward to the comments on this one. So what are your thoughts on Sleep Token? Are they the next best thing or just the Emperor's new clothes? Cheers guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do not forget to subscribe and I shall see you again very soon.